Hello, this is Mike Lively, and today we're going to finish up uh, creating a 3D room. And let me remind you of where we're at. Now, if you're just tuning in from YouTube, make sure you watch the two previous videos. You won't quite know where we're at. But we've created this 3D room, but all it does is flips out into a center position right here. And what we have to do to complete this is actually push those flipping panels out into their positions. Uh, so it looks like a room. And then we need to push this final panel back. So it needs to go back in the Z direction back there. So let's get to it. So I'm in the code, and all this code was automatically generated uh, by Flash Catalyst. I imported it, and now we're going to look at what we need to change to make those walls move. Now it's very easy to do, and let me show you how to do that. You go down here, there's the transitions, and we worked with that last time. Once again, if you just tune in this video, make sure you watch those previous two videos. Then you understand what we're doing. And all we need to do at this point is use a move statement. It's so easy. There it is. Now, how do I know that this move statement exists? So let me show you that. All you have to do in Flash Builder, if you want to know what's available to you, is just hit the uh, uh, less than sign and then S, which means spark, and then the double colon. And up will come all the possibilities there. And I thought, well, you know, I need to move this, and I need to move it in 3D. So if I come here and start typing move, is there anything in there? Let's see if there is. And look, move 3D. Now, what does that do? If I click on that, it'll add it and hit a space, and it show, it'll show me all the possible possibilities that can occur there. Let's try that again. And uh, then I can start playing around with those different options. Now, uh, and, of course, if you roll over this and you F2 or you go to the help, you can actually... Uh, you can navigate to that method and it will show you everything that it does. And so that's all I need to do. I just need to move my panels around, so I'm going to use this Move 3D to do so. So I've actually commented out the code, and here's the first piece right here. What I want to do is move that back panel back. Now, remember, all my images are mitmapped mapped to 512, so I'm going to be moving uh, basically 256 uh, chunks back and forth and side to side and up and down. So I want to move my back panel back 256. So let's uncomment this. There you go. And so that should move my panel back, but I have a problem. The problem is, is that there's no name for this panel. You see that? I'm calling this bitmap 5. Well, let's go up here and see if there's a bitmap 5. There's not a bitmap 5. You see right here, there's no name on that bit back bitmap. It just says back. So I want to create a bitmap 5. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to comment out this code. And I've got some code that I'm going to uncomment. So let's go ahead and comment out this code. There you go. Just toggle. And below that, I've actually just copied the whole thing again. And let me uncomment it. And I've given it an ID name, bitmap5. And so that's going to be the target for my move method. So let's go down. And there's my move target right there, bitmap5. And so when the program runs from state 1 to state 2, that's going to be executed for bitmap5, and it's going to move back Z256 pixels. Great. And I got to do the same thing for the other panels. So uh, here's my uh, bitmap one. Now, what is bitmap one? We can go up and take a look at the bitmaps again. And let's scroll over here, and we can see that bitmap one. Let's take a look at that. Is this ID right here? But that's my ceiling. Look at that. So I actually need to move that up. And let's go through. So you remember, bitmap two is my floor. Bitmap 3 is the left panel, and bitmap 4 is the right panel. And so we're going to actually use all that information now as we uh, navigate around. So my ceiling is bitmap 1, so I need to move that up 256 pixels. My floor is bitmap 2, right here. So I need to move that down 256 pixels. So let's uncomment that. The next one is my left panel. I need to move that over minus 256 in the x direction. And my right panel, I need to move that over 256 pixels. So let's uncomment that code and run it. And here's my image. And click on it, and everything goes into place. Isn't that beautiful? So now let's go back into the code and fix it. So when we click on the room again, it goes back into place. So all you have to do is come along here and add all the move statements again. But just basically reverse the directions. Just like you do with the rotation, as opposed to uh, reversing rotations, you're just reversing directions. So as opposed to going uh, 
plus 256 back, we're going minus 256 forward. Okay. So all that's done, we're going to uncomment all that code just by highlighting and right click and hit source and toggle. And we'll do that for all of them. Or you can hit control shift C. And highlight and control shift C. And highlight control shift C. And now let's run the program. And there's my room and it goes back and there's my room and it goes back. Now there's a problem here. I want the room to fill the entire stage. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stretch it across the stage. Let's try that first. So I'm back in the MXML main component, and that runs the particular component that we've been working with. You can see that right there. And what I want to do is I want to stretch that component completely across the stage. Now I'm going to be limited by width and height, so I want to remove these from the application tag, width and height, so it doesn't, in uh, instance, cut off the image. And then I'm going to come along here to the component, and I just want to put a scale in there. Let's scale the X across the stage. And we'll let it equal 2. And let's run the program. And so it has stretched out the uh, image, so let's click on that. And it does scale my room. But there's a problem here. And the problem is this, is that it's skewing the scale. Look at that. It's not centered in the stage, and that drives me crazy. And you can do a lot of work with this and a lot of programming and try to figure out how to do this correctly. So how do you fix this? Well, there's a number of approaches. One approach, which I did, is I went back to the program and I enlarged this image from 512 to 1024. And I enlarged the top image and the bottom image but I kept the two side images the same and so what I need to do as well in a sense is push this back further and uh, push these up differently so everything has to be rescaled and readjusted but the fix for this was actually just basically resizing the images and I know that sounds kind of strange but you need to work with this, this is new technology and uh, let me show you the final results of that okay this particular one is called expand it, this is actually in your download and if you go here and you run this program you get this nice centered room. It's perfect. Everything's just right on. And I was very happy with that. And that basically just came by rescaling the graphics. And then I actually scaled in the Z direction. So here's the problem with the skewing. If you try to scale in the X direction, what happens is everything's just fixed at this corner. So any uh, aberrations that you have are going to become skewed in that direction. If you scale in the Z direction, however, it's not. So all I did was expanded the graphics and then scaled in the Z direction and I got a perfect room. So the code's all there in the download. Download it, play around with it. And this was pretty fast toward the end, but we need to finish up and go to the next topic. So uh, have some fun with this. I hope you enjoyed it. And this was Mike Lively. Thanks for listening.